Thor, Love and Thunder is just a few months away, and few fans certainly know about Thor God's fourth solo franchise within the larger Marvel Cinematic Universe. Marvel Studios is so quiet about the movie that many fans may have a lot of fun surprises in the store, including the possibility of guest appearances by other Marvel characters other than those already confirmed. Despite his brief screen time in Thor, Ragnarok, Jeff Goldblum's grandmaster stole the show, he was introduced as a strong gamesman with a penchant for gambling and a colossal ego, except for a cameo appearance in an episode of What If, the character hasn't been seen since his debut appearance. A figure as essential as the grandmaster deserves far more than a one-off appearance, and Love and Thunder is the greatest option for his long-awaited comeback in the next MCU films. Returning for additional scenes with the same cast and director that initially brought Grandmaster to the big screen appears to be Grandmaster's best option for his next appearance. Sir Tor, although being a minor character, in contrast, is one of the few successful villains in the MCU, as he was tasked with destroying Asgard when Ragnarok arrived. As a result, Thor, Ragnarok's end saw the massive fire demon destroying the Asgardians' home while the Asgardians watched from a refugee ship. Sir Tor is one of the few adversaries who has yet to be vanquished or crippled, which means he is still free to wreak havoc across the cosmos. Given that Gore the God Butcher is the major enemy in Love and Thunder, it seems more than possible that the deity will be among the first victims of the antagonist, with his murder perhaps bringing Gore to Thor's attention in the first place. Kat Dennings returned to the MCU as Darcy Lewis in WandaVision after a long hiatus. The character, who now holds a degree, had been AWOL since the events of the Dark World, but now appears to be returned for good. Many fans have speculated that now that Darcy is back in the franchise, she would be able to reconnect with Thor in Love and Thunder after over a decade apart. Dennings has confirmed that she has already started filming her next MCU project after WandaVision, and while she insists it isn't Thor 4, she wouldn't be the first Marvel actor to mislead about their involvement in a highly anticipated chapter of the franchise. Dr. Eric Selvig, played by Stellan Skarsgård, was a key figure in the MCU's early years, starring in both the first two Thor films and the first two Avengers team-ups. The bright scientist has been mainly missing from the MCU for quite some time, with the exception of a brief cameo in Spider-Man, Far From Home. After Avengers, Age of Ultron, Skargard's involvement with the MCU appeared to be over since the character has yet to make another appearance. Given Natalie Portman's return as Jane Foster, it wouldn't be out of the question for her trusted partner to join her, bringing the old team Thor back together. One significant comic character that has yet to be adapted for the MCU plays a crucial role in Thor's greater mythos. Amora the Enchantress is an Asgardian goddess who appears frequently in Thor's comic books. The Enchantress is possibly the most well-known Thor adversary who has been overlooked by the MCU thus far, while similar aspects of the character may be seen in Sylvie's character in the Loki series, fans are still eager to see Amora in a live-action film. Given that Love and Thunder will ostensibly focus more on the various Pantheon's gods, the Asgardian goddess may finally find her place in the franchise. The Egyptian moon god Khonshu is a new addition to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, exposing viewers to the Egyptian pantheon of gods. Khonshu, who is voiced by F. Murray Abraham, bestows Moon Knight and Mr. Knight abilities to Mark Spector and Stephen Grant, respectively. In its first few episodes, Moon Knight introduced numerous different religious pantheons to the MCU, and Love and Thunder promised to do so even more so when it eventually hits theaters in July. Many fans have speculated that since Christian Bale's villain appears to be on the search for everything that claims to be a deity, Khonshu may end up in Gore's crosshairs. In Avengers, Infinity War, Zoe Saldana's Gamora was sadly murdered during her father Thanos' pursuit of the Infinity Stones. Following the events of Avengers, Endgame, an alternate reality version of the Guardian was left stranded in the MCU, leaving many fans wondering when Gamora will next be seen.
Given the presence of her fellow Guardians of the Galaxy in the film, Gamora appears to be a plausible inclusion for Love and Thunder. Thor and the Guardians were on a quest to find the lost Gamora when they were last seen, so it seems likely that she will appear in some capacity in their next appearance, even if it is simply in a post credit sequence. Hercules is a comic book character who has yet to make an appearance in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. As both a friend and a foe of Thor, the character appears to be a foregone conclusion in the franchise, with some fans even speculating on who would portray Hercules in the MCU. Love and Thunder's debut teaser validated a long-held notion that the film will introduce the Greek gods to the MCU, beginning with Russell Crowe's Zeus. Given Zeus's close relationship with his son Hercules, it's possible, if not definite, that the Avenger will make an appearance here as well. Beta Ray Bill is possibly the most eagerly anticipated character from the Marvel comics of the 1990s. In the comics, the Corbinite superhero is a regular friend of Thor and the archetypal Stormbreaker wielding. Beta Ray Bill has yet to make an appearance in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, other from a cameo as one of the heads atop the Grandmaster's castle in Thor, Ragnarok. For a long time, fans have been asking for Beta Ray Bill to be incorporated into the series, but they have had to make do with passing references to his presence. With a filmmaker like Taika Waititi at the helm, it appears like this strange and revered hero may be on his way. Loki, played by Tom Hiddleston, has been a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the Thor trilogy since the beginning, serving as the perfect counterbalance to his brother. Many anticipated that the God of Mischief would be absent from the fourth Thor film after his death in the opening sequence of Avengers, Infinity War, but this isn't the case. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, having a Thor film without Loki seems almost heretical. Loki is one of the franchise's biggest breakout stars, and fans can't get enough of him. With the God of Mischief revived in another reality, it's not unthinkable that he'll make an appearance in Love and Thunder at some point, even if it's simply a tiny cameo.